Hi everyone, I'm Anton Bukov and I'm here to present you like small presentation. It's uh, like few ideas on how we can compare different liquidity sources. I would define uh, how we will uh, make this comparison. We have a uh, few different access, like form of liquidity, is it order book based or AMM or RFQ based. Uh, the environment where this uh, liquidity is placed, is it a uh, centralized exchange or DEX or DEX on layer two or DEX on separate own layer two, uh, which was pretty popular a few years ago. And one more dimension is uh, security. Uh, it's like how much this liquidity is baked by value. Uh, it could be spot liquidity, leverage liquidity, and uh, options. So first, if we would compare different liquidity sources by the environment, we would see that there are centralized exchanges and uh, DEXs, and they could be compared by the cost of the transactions and fees, and also how much they are custodial or they are permissionless. So you could see that uh, sex they are a lot of custodian, <laughs> and uh, uh, DEXs, they're mostly permissionless, but uh, the, the cost is different. Layer, two, layer one is usually most expensive, and layer two is uh, cheap. Uh, for example, if we would compare these two L2 DEXs uh, on own and on uh, general purpose layer two, uh, own DEXs on own layer two usually cheaper, but for users, it usually makes much more sense to have DEX on Shared Layer 2 because they could use different services, different DeFi applications. And as you could see, the bright DeFi future in the, in the top right corner. <laughs> That's where we are aiming to, to have cheap and permissionless uh, liquidity. Uh, if we would compare forms of liquidity, how, how it's presented, uh, there are a few types, it's order book, RFQ, concentrated AMM, and uh, like infinite AMM. Uh, concentrated AMM, it's like a uh, curve and uh, like Uniswap version three. Uh, and uh, AMM in general is Uniswap and Banker and uh, a lot of other projects. If we would see an avail availability, uh, you can see that most of them are public except RFQ. Uh, RFQ is a request for quote system when you ask someone to give you a quote and they can give you a quote or not give you a quote. And uh, about percents of this liquidity, you, you could see that for order book and RFQ, it depends that they need to do some job to make their liquidity available for users, for traders. And uh, for AMMs, uh, liquidity is always available, uh, so it's available automatically, automatically. And in, in terms of, uh, it, it's almost the same interactiveness uh, that uh, for making it available for order books and RFQs, those who provide this liquidity, they need to perform actions continuously, uh, especially when market is volatile. And for AMMs, this happens automatically. And if we would uh, compare how this liquidity is baked by value, like security of this liquidity, you could see that we can compare it by volumes, trading volumes, and how much it's secured. Is it fully secured or partially secured? You can see that spot liquidity uh, it's fully secured, but it usually have uh, lower volumes than other liquidity. For example, leverage liquidity, it's when traders do long or short positions, they uh, usually make uh, higher volumes, higher trading volumes, but uh, yeah, th they are still f fully secured, except uh, synthetic, uh, synthetic assets. Uh, it's like, uh, traders could turn their 1K of uh, value into 5K collateral and 4K debt, and it will be fi efficiently like 5X long of one asset or 4X short of another asset. 
it, it depends on how you look at this position. And regarding options, they could be uh, fully secured and partially secured. Uh, it also depends on the protocol. Uh, now we see that more and more projects on DeFi appear, um, derivatives on uh, blockchain, and uh, some of them are also partially secured, some of them are fully secured. I think this uh, chart misses the uh, scenes. They will be for sure on the left side, and they could uh, provide uh, leverage or options. Usually it's like this. Yeah, and uh, what happens in uh, aggregation? So, aggregator usually uses uh, spot liquidity from DEXs, can use uh, leveraged liquidity by uh, liquidations, and also can use uh, RFQ system, uh, which we usually call PMM, like professional market makers. If some user want to trade something, they uh, aggregator ask professional market makers if they wish to give a quote and what these market makers are actually doing they are bridging liquidity of other environments like of centralized exchanges other RFQ systems OTC systems other blockchains so actually uh, aggregators they have this liquidity from other chains and other environments uh, because uh, systems uh, like PMMs, they do like kind of pre-arbitrage. When they give a quote, if you will try to fill it, they will immediately hedge their position on centralized exchange or anywhere else. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> If you have any questions, welcome. Yes, thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, we still have some time for one, two questions, so please feel free. Okay, coming. Uh, about this? Uh, no timelines, actually. Uh, we're working on this, so yeah, it's not a simple question because uh, there are a lot of different uh, blockchain-based uh, 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 systems for options and other derivatives, and yeah, it's like everyone is thinking about it and everyone is working on it. It's like uh, the hugest missing piece of DeFi right now because uh, as you saw on this chart, options, especially partially secured, they usually have the highest volumes on the um, fiat market. And uh, I tried to demonstrate it with this uh, huge uh, iceberg. <laughs> like the hugest part is hidden under the water. And uh, right now we have uh, huge volumes uh, on, uh, in, in DeFi on spot and on leverage, but we d still don't have enough volumes for options because in uh, traditional markets, options uh, volumes, they're usually like up to 10 times higher than uh, spot market. So it's still coming to DeFi, it's subject for the this or next year. Yeah, I, um, thanks a lot for the introduction. <clears throat> I just have a question about um, different liquidity on different chains. So if, if you know, you're trading on an L2, can you access mainnet liquidity and come back to L2? Um, is that something, I mean, how are you thinking about this? Uh, it's actually a question about like cross-chain liquidity or L1, L2 liquidity. Uh, the, the most important thing for aggregators right now is that users who perform uh, trades, they have atomic behavior. So they have their transaction passed or their transaction reverted and they do not have any intermediate state where they are like not sure what would happen. 
next. And uh, uh, here, PMMs, they could help to bring L2 liquidity, other blockchain liquidity, centralized exchange liquidity, and still keep this liquidity access atomic for the end user. And uh, that's the huge benefit uh, comparing to systems which are trying to provide cross-chain swaps because uh, you could stack in any kind of middle asset or bridge can be broken or bridge can be hacked during your swap if your swap is uh, like a matter of few minutes. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, one. And, uh, and one more thing. Uh, the most important part here is that these PMMs, there are a lot of PMMs, and they compete with each other, making prices better and better for end users continuously. Okay, we have time for one more question, and I'm coming. I saw a hand somewhere. Okay, coming. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm curious, how do you see uh, on-chain and off-chain liquidity um, sort of starting to work more together uh, in, in the coming years. So I, I think, if I understand it correctly, you, should have, you sort of show this with the PMMs. Um, I imagine these are you know professional, uh, professional market makers who are both uh, you know on chain on 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 central exchanges and also then then bridge easily to 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 dexes. Um, but I think right now. Uh, unless you're a specialized trading firm, you're not going to be able to do that. And any large financial institution is not going to bridge any assets over to, to chains. Um, but that's where most of the liquidity comes from. So how, how do you sort of see that evolving? I, I, would, I would say that share of uh, on-chain liquidity is continuously growing since 2017 or something. Uh, before 2017 or 2016, there were zero on-chain liquidity, <laughs> and now its share is growing. Volumes are growing, but share of on-chain liquidity is also growing a lot. So I'm not sure it will, like, uh, going to 100 percentages. <laughs> it's definitely not possible. Uh, but it will be, like, tens of percentages, maybe one quarter or one third or half. Yeah. Okay, guys, any other questions to Anton? No, then uh, let's give some applause to Anton. Thank you.